Welcome to the Next Generation Rockstars podcast. If you are trying to figure out how do you recruit and retain this next generation of rock star talent, well, you are in the right place. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to seeing from me. Today, I've partnered with my hubby right here, my hubby, my business partner, Gene Hammett. Well, glad to be here with you. I run uh, a podcast called Growth Think Tank, and I work with um, the founders and leaders of the Inc. 5000 companies growing the fastest 1% of companies in the world. Absolutely. So we are going to be taking a look at where our work collides. And that happens to be in the world of employee retention. So this episode today is talking about the five types of workers who are hurting your employee retention. So follow along with us as we we tell some comical stories from our own personal work experience, or maybe from some of the companies that we've worked with previously, where we talk about each type of the employees and how it's actually hurting your employee retention. But in there, we're also going to be offering up a free framework that Gene and I have perfected over the years through our own work as entrepreneurs, but also in working with other companies. And this framework is called the STAY framework, and it is super simple. It's something that we use to keep employees happy, fulfilled, and motivated at work. And let me tell you, some of these things are so easy that you can implement them today and see major, major results out of your employees because that's all what we want. We want our employees to be productive. We want them to be efficient, but we also want them to stay. So sign up to get the free stay uh, stay framework. And with it, we'll be offering up a free training that we have partnered with a company called Velocity Global. Now, Velocity Global's CEO, Ben Wright, will be on doing this training with us. And Ben actually runs a PEO company, which is a uh, employee benefits company. And this is global. So companies that are small, medium sized that are struggling with those benefit pieces, those, you know, HR pieces that can trip up any company. Ben's company, Velocity Global, will swoop in and help you fix it. So where do they get that report? So if you go to amandahammett.com forward slash stay, you can download that report today. All right, here's the episode. Employee retention. I really love this conversation because it really is one of the biggest things going on in our workforce. What do you think about employee retention? Uh, This is something I hear over and over and over again. Anytime I'm at a conference speaking or if I'm working with employees, there are companies, they're always saying, how can we keep more of our employees? There's a war for talent. You probably feel it because you want to have the best workers. You want to have the most talented. You want them to to be a part of the culture. And you want to make sure you're very intentional about you know creating a kind of work experience that makes it so that they really love to come to work. Uh, but employee retention is something that a lot of people kind of like it's too fluffy, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. because it's not something that is on the balance sheet or the PL. If you had a number on your financials that said exactly what it's costing you because of employee retention, you'd be surprised and you'd pay a lot more attention to it. Absolutely. The cost of employee retention is staggering. Um, if CFOs knew exactly how much this was costing, it would change the way that companies around the world would operate. Because right now, employee retention is broken up into so many different buckets, whether it's training or management or recruiting costs, it's it's all broken up. So it's not one specific number. But the thing is, is that actually, according to Gallup, they estimate that every single year, the it costs the American economy over a trillion dollars just in employee turnover. Uh, let me jump in here because that's a big number. Like it a is. trillion's really big. Um, but, you know, let's talk about it from a sense of what is it costing you right now? So SHRM, which is the Society for Human Resource Management, estimates that it actually costs between one and a half and two times that person's salary in order to replace them. So that is the recruiting cost, that is the more soft cost. So like the manager training time, getting that person ramped up. But let's be honest, a lot of the industries that I work with, they have employees that have been there 30, 40 years. That that amount of corporate knowledge that walks out the door, 
it's going to take years and years and years to replicate that into a new person. So that two, you know, two times their salary, I, I think is, is easily done. That's really for knowledge workers. Like mm -hmm. if you had someone that was an hourly employee, it's going to be less, but there still is a cost to to employee retention. Oh, absolutely. But even in the hourly space, uh, you know, there are a lot of situations where you have people that have been there 20, 30, 40 years. And so they're taking with them a lot of that knowledge. So it is an ongoing issue. I had um, a, a workshop a few weeks ago that you attended and one of the clients in there talked about um, <clears throat> losing, uh, I think he said 25 employees in, in one, one month. month. Yeah. And I said, you know, what do you think that cost you? And he goes, I know exactly what it cost me. Because I had to get temporary workers. These are hourly paid. And it cost him a quarter of a million dollars. In one month. In one month. Mm -hmm. So it is costing you a lot of money not really understanding this employee retention. So that's the reason why we put together this uh, episode. We're, we've come together. You know, I focus on a different set of, of clients, which you, you've already explained. And Amanda has the corporate uh, side of this. But together, we've seen this. And we want to share with you and make this a little bit fun. So we're going to talk about the five types of workers that are hurting your employee retention. So yes. you ready? You Absolutely. Yeah, these are these are some good ones. And we've all seen each of these play out in our own careers. So the first one is the micromanager. I mean, come on, we have all seen this time and time again. I'll be honest, I, I've probably <clears throat> been a micromanager from time to time. <laughs> um, it's it's easy to be a micromanager because if you're an A player, if you've done the work before, you know exactly what to do and you can actually just tell them. And that's the easiest, quickest thing for you to do is to tell them the exact steps. Is that right? Right. But I think a micromanager, there's there's more to it. It's it's standing over. It's like constantly like in their face. What are you doing now? What are you doing now? And it gets to the point where the employee can't even do their work because they're so focused on responding to you or answering to you that they end up having to spend a lot more time and anxiety invested in just calming you and dealing with you. This reminds me of a story of one of my clients who, uh, you know, before he became an entrepreneur, was talking about, um, you know, his manager. And this mm -hmm. this guy was the traditional micromanager. He was hired to do some marketing for the company. And the the owner of the company knew a little bit about marketing, enough to be dangerous, as they say. Uh, but he would, you know, second guess everything that, that was suggested as important or the next steps. And he would, you know, talk about the newsletter and the open rates and why didn't happen. And I remember one specific detail. He was like, well, I didn't get it. And it was back and forth, back and forth. And he's like, did you check your spam folder? And he goes, it's not in my spam folder. And then all of a, guess what? It was in the spam folder. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different types of managers out there, but the micromanager probably is one of the worst because you think you're doing the right thing, but usually you're not. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I deal a lot with the younger employees, those under 30, early in career, um, and this is something I hear consistently over and over again is this micromanager and how it's just devastating to your career in a lot of ways. Um, I had a young lady come up to me at a conference recently and she told me about her manager, her former manager. Um, she said that he basically had her sit down at the end of the day, not during the actual work day, but at the end of the day. And she had to write out everything that she did that entire day, broken down into 15 minute increments. Now keep in mind, this young lady was not an hourly employee. She was a salaried employee. And he expected this to come to his email box no earlier than 6.15. Now the office closed at six, but she was not to work on it during the day. And she had to do this every single day. And if she didn't, I mean, there was, consequences the following day. Now, I don't think it's going to shock anybody to tell you that she did not last even a year at this company before she was gone. And it all had to do with this micromanager. I want to make sure we connect the dots here because the micromanager, <laughs> uh, you may thinking, you know, how is that hurting retention? Well, you may have heard this before. I think it's just so appropriate, but uh, people don't leave jobs. They leave managers. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And, and we probably all had bad managers that we reported to that caused us to leave companies. And that is the reason why it's number one on the list. It is probably one of the most common. And it really is something that we, we wanted to kind of draw you into this because some of the others are going to be a, a, a little bit more, maybe even fun to talk about um, because you, when we came up together, we had a lot of fun uh, putting all these together and, and just for you. All right. So the second one is not a micromanager, but a clueless boss. Now, I'm going to talk about this from my own personal experience. I had a boss one time, and I'm not going to name names. Um, <clears throat> however, every single day or every single interaction I had with this person, I would just sit back and ask myself, how in the world did you become a manager? How are you in charge of leading people? And not just one or two, I mean 50 or 60 people. And I was just flabbergasted daily. You remember those days. I do. Uh, <laughs> they were stressful because you cried a lot. Um, but I, I've i been through this too. I mean, mine was a little bit different. I have I respected this, this manager, but the way they showed up had no um, regard for the company growing and moving forward. It was just a place for them to kind of – it was more like a hobby than it was anything else. And, and I say clueless because it really did feel like – I'm pushing forward the business harder than the owner of the business was. And it really, it really allowed me to um, reflect on what kind of boss I wanted to be in this whole thing. And I wanted to be the exact opposite. Absolutely. But I think in, in that situation, I mean, she actually had personal shoppers coming in. She had no clue literally what was going on in the day to day. Uh, she, she, she did, but she was just checked out yeah, for the most absolutely. of it, you know, it, it's hard to get that kind of work done in a couple of hours. Um, it was a small operation. Um, I grew a lot because I was forced to, to think for myself, which was mm -hmm. good for me because I had that drive. But it really is just this clueless boss is, is the people that you really have no respect for. Yeah. Is that fair? Absolutely. But in my case, I mean, he was smart in a certain way, but he would ask questions of me in meetings or of anybody and everybody was just staring at him and you could tell that they were like kind of an idiot here and i felt really bad but at the same time i eventually just had to start saying hey this is how it is this is this is the decisions that we need to be making this is the direction that we need to be taking and he actually asked me in the exit interview if i had listened to would would you be leaving and i said probably not at least not now well, I'm thinking about this right now. When we put this together, we we talked about stories that could fit along with it, and we we picked two personal stories here because um, they, we thought you could relate to them. But also, we we left both those jobs. Absolutely, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so we quit, and it really drives into you know you want to make sure you pay attention to this clueless boss uh, character, if you will, because it will uh, in, impact your employee retention. I will actually say that uh, this particular boss situation that I was talking about, the turnover there was enormous. I mean, it was a constant churn of employees in and out, in and out, in and out. Some roles, obviously, a lot more than others. But it, it was like you, you almost got to the point where you didn't want to invest in getting to know somebody new because you knew that they'd be gone within, you know, six months at the most. Let's hold up here for a second because we're talking about these types of workers that are hurting your employee retention. If you want to be a better manager and you want to really create the kind of leadership that people admire, then you want to have a simple framework that we've developed over a few years of working with leaders that will help you increase the uh, re employee retention. We call it the STAY framework. Absolutely. And this framework is super easy and it's super easy to implement and use every single day with your employees. Because again, at the end of the day, you want to keep them. So we have boiled this down to one page, one simple page you can just easily implement. So sign up and get it below. There is one thing in there that we have seen that almost every manager is leaving out. They don't even know to include it. They're actually opposed to it. But the power of this one little thing that's inside there that takes about five minutes is really a game changer when it comes to employee retention. Absolutely. I mentioned it when I spoke uh, at a conference recently, and it was just profound to everybody in that audience. 
So if you want to get the framework to help you retain your employees, be sure to go to amandahammett.com forward slash stay and download that today. All right. So the third type of employee that is killing your retention is the loafer. The loafer is the person we all know that tries to uh, seem like they're working, but they're never really getting anything done. Yeah, they are doing the bare minimum in order to survive, in order to continue to collect that paycheck. And it's really frustrating for everybody else because they're actually having to pick up the slack because, you know, this person didn't get things done on time or they're wandering around the office drinking coffee and talking to people. And what are they actually doing? What are they actually accomplishing? It's fascinating. Everyone knows that social butterfly. And they seem to never be really doing the work that they're supposed to be doing. I don't know how when a manager sits down with that person that they can actually, um, you know, not just fire them on the spot. I think what it is, is a lot of times they're able to hide. They're able to find themselves into situations with managers who are not having these constant conversations about what's going on. How can we help you? Well, this reminds me of a story that, um, I was involved with a company that went through a merger and you bring over two cultures and they combine together. And that happens from time to time. And uh, in this case, this this founder was talking about, you know, bringing over a group of people that just didn't seem to fit. And those people um, were told to to really operate in a different way than what they were used to. Mm-hmm. And it really taught, caused a lot of them to just kind of switch off. And so they just collected a paycheck. They showed up day in and day out. Um, They were at the meetings they were supposed to be at. Everything looked from the surface like they were doing what they're supposed to be doing. But we both know the truth. They were just loafing around. Oh, absolutely. I I mean, you know, I I have plenty of stories about this, you know, whether it's my own personal work history or dealing with companies that I've worked with. Um, But one, you know, stands out in my mind. And this person wandered around, drank coffee, checked Facebook regularly. I mean, constantly was updating Facebook or social media. Um, And it was just, it was fascinating because everybody knew who this person was and and loved it when they stopped by and and chatted for a minute. But at the end of the day, what did this person actually accomplish? I'm still baffled by that. So we're talking about employee retention. I want to be clear. You want the loafer to leave. Absolutely. (laughs) I, I was... So frustrated with the loafer constantly. But but that's exactly the reason why you need to be tuned into this because that kind of person, that loafer is driving others away. If you don't have a high enough standard for the work, then others won't take the whole job very seriously. And they'll be looking for a place where they can can really be uh, a self-starter. They can really be uh, you know, appreciated for, for doing the work and they want to be surrounded by others that are doing the work. Absolutely. I mean, this the loafer will drive away your A players. Absolutely. They can't stand to see this. And so, it, you know, A players want to work with other A players, not with loafers. Got to lose the loafer. All right. So let's go into number four because it, it is... Um, This is a fun one. We had to put it in there because it happens from time to time. I think you've had more experience with this than I have. Um, But the fourth type of employee that is killing your employee retention is the hothead. That one person that flies off the handle way too quick. uh, They they really over-exaggerate certain things. And and, and I'll be clear here. You want them to leave too. But you also want to make sure that you're creating a place and employee experience where these people don't exist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, for one, in this day and age, we need to, you know, employee sense of safety needs to come. It's paramount to everything else. And in certain situations, these hotheads can get pretty extreme and can make you feel unsafe. Now, I worked with a certain hothead and we found ourselves always walking on eggshells around this person, constantly tiptoeing, oh, how is he gonna react to this? And you know, some situations he would be great, in other situations it would just explode. Uh, one day he actually threw a chair in a conference room up against the window. It bounced back and almost hit somebody. Um, But that was actually the day that myself and a few other people decided 
we were out because of this hothead. The one of the number one uh, factors of team success is psychological safety. Absolutely. This comes from the Aristotle work at Google. Um, it's done with you know many times over with companies looking at this. So creating a place where this hothead doesn't you know survive, doesn't last, um, is a really important part of your leadership. Absolutely. And, you know, it really is up to the leaders to recognize this kind of behavior and nip it in the bud, move that person out. This is not something that you want to continue because other people are are constantly thinking about, I've got to go. I've got to get out of here. I can't continue to work with this person. All right. Number five, I, I think this one's the hardest to to really get your head around, but it is a game changer when you think about this. If you value your culture, then this is the type of person that you must let go of. Um, number five is the toxic superstar. Yes. Uh, we, we all have probably worked with people that have rubbed us the wrong way, but they were good at what they did. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had a client once where... Um, we were sitting around with the, the CEO and the COO of this small company, about 30 people. And we were talking about, you know, give me the name of two people that, that really give you frustration as a leader. Well, two ladies came up, the names came up. I won't share the names, but um, one of them cried all the time. And, and I, I get it. Like you don't want to have those conversations and it seemed to be daily that she was crying. And I asked, why was she crying? Well, that gets us back into number two which is the toxic superstar in this, in their world, she was a high performer. She was, she was in recruiting and she was really um, able to do the work of two to three employees, which is impressive. But if it comes at the cost of her being toxic and driving others away, because it was truly um, when I listed through how many people has she dri driven away? It was like four in the last like three or four months, mm -hmm. really a, a very expensive decision to keep that high performer on. Absolutely. And not only that, like, let's be very clear. She was specifically named in exit interviews as this person's the reason I'm leaving. I got, um, I asked details because I was curious about this and there were some expletives that were discussed about how she showed up. There was also, um, the fact that she lied to, to get work and she would work extra hours on the weekend to cover this up. This toxic superstar is seducive in the sense that they are performing at a higher level than others. But if it is at the cost of the culture, you as a leader or a manager has to really make some hard decisions because it is in, um, hurting your employee retention. Absolutely. I'm, just think about the, the team or the people in her environment. I mean, they are constantly thinking about, I've got to get another job. I've got to get out of here because you know, this is not a, an environment that they want to spend eight hours a day in plus every single day. So these are the five uh, types of employees that are hurting your employee retention. We went through this. Uh, we wanted to have fun with you because you probably got some of these in your um, workspace right now. Absolutely. And I want you to think about this, you know, sit down, maybe make jot a few names down. And, you know, where do they fit in this? Mm -hmm. And are they really um, hurting the employee experience overall? And are they truly costing people to leave the company? Absolutely. And, and I think that when you're really honest about this and you really start thinking uh, about the different people that would fall into these five categories, it might scare you a little bit, honestly. So you may be thinking about what do you do with all this? Because this is not a traditional episode where we're interviewing people. Mm -hmm. This is not your traditional episode where we're giving you the step-by-step because what we wanted to let you know is we've created um, through a partnership, a training about employee retention. And it really is something I'm really proud of. Um, it comes along with the STAY framework that we've mentioned. That STAY framework will help you be a better leader tomorrow. You can literally download it today and use it in your next conversation and you will see impact right away. Absolutely. This is something that we have put together through trial and error over the years, working with uh, our own company, working with other companies, and, and really seeing what are these managers and leaders that are the you know highest performers that have you know melded together a team that is just trucking along and is just super efficient and really seems to just go at it every single day. What are they doing? So what are some of their best practices? So we have pulled them together. And let me tell you, 
Some of these are ridiculously easy and it is shocking to me every single day when I see leaders and managers not doing this. And then yet they're also complaining, I can't keep my people. Well, here is the answer and it is super easy. The STAY framework can be downloaded at amandahammett.com slash STAY. Well, that wraps up this episode. Really excited to be able to share this work with you, to come together with my beautiful wife. Um, I really have a lot of respect for what she's done in the corporate world and, and really wanted to share something with you because I feel like you could be the leaders that you really wanted to be by understanding these types of employees, but more by getting that STAY framework. So make sure you go ahead and do that. Absolutely. And of course, join us for the free training that we will be doing along with that. Um, and we'll be including our partners, Velocity Global. So thank you again for joining us and we will see you in the next episode. As always, lead with courage. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of The Next Generation Rockstars, where we have discussed all about recruiting and retaining that next generation of talent. So I'm guessing that you probably learned a tremendous amount from this week's Rockstar Leader. And if that is the case, don't keep me a secret. Share this episode with the world, but really share it with your friends, with your colleagues, because they also need to learn how to recruit and retain this next generation of talent, because these skills are crucial to business success moving forward. Now, of course, I want you to keep up to date every single week as we are dropping each and every episode. So be sure to subscribe to your favorite podcast platform of your choice, and you will see the next generation rock stars show up just for you.